Hello, in this lesson, you will learn how to add unit tests to your code using the Godot unit test framework, otherwise known as GUT. Having unit tests running over your code is a great way to boost your confidence in that code's correctness. With unit tests in place, you can refactor your code more reliably, knowing you can rerun the test to check to see if anything is broken as a result of your changes. So unit testing and software development can help to produce more reliable code and reduce risk when we introduce changes to an application. Game development's no different. Unit testing there brings the same benefits. In the previous lesson, quite a bit of code was added to create the wind detector class. You did some ad hoc testing for correctness, but didn't come close to testing all the wind scenarios. In this lesson, you'll add unit tests over the wind detector class in order to test more wind scenarios, and then be able to rerun those tests as needed when changes to the code base happen. As is the case with all of these lessons, the source code for this particular lesson is available and will be linked in the video description. So let's get started with what's lovingly known as GUT the Godot unit testing framework. Gut is an open source add-on for Godot. This provides you with a library of functions with which you can test assertions on your code. So you will only be using a few assertions in this lesson, but you can see the extensive list of Gut assertions in the documentation. Gut installs as a Godot add-on. So on the Assets tab, search for Gut, select Gut, then click Download. You'll then click Install, You'll now see the gut folder in your add-ons directory. The final step is to activate this add-on. So go to Project, Project Settings, click the tab, and activate gut. You will now see that you have a gut tab in the lower third of the Godot editor. So with gut installed and set up, you can create your first test. So we need a file to hold our test cases. Create a script at tests unit test wind detector as shown here. All gut tests extend from the gut test class, so extend your test class as you see here. So in this file, we're meant to add functions, which each function will be a test case. By convention, those test cases start with test underscore, and it's a descriptive name of what's being tested. So here we see test empty board no win. Here we set up an empty board matrix and run it through the check win function. Then we assert that the empty string is returned using the gut provided assert eq function. Okay, so now let's run the test. The gut tab has a run all tests button, but gut needs to know where to find these tests when we click that button. So scroll down to the directory section and in directory zero, set it to the directory we just placed our first class in as shown here. So now the moment of truth, click the run all button we'll see a UI appear that shows the test runner and you should have one script run and one test run and the passing count should be one. So congratulations, you've implemented the first unit test for a wind detector class. So that's one test down, on to the next one. You could just duplicate the current test and just change the board matrix input as we show here. This does duplicate a lot of code though. Really only the assigned value to board is what's changed between the two tests. And we have quite a few more win scenarios to test, so this strategy could get quite messy. Gut provides a mechanism called parameterized tests to help in this type of testing situation. It allows you to build a list of parameters, in our case the board variable, and run them through a single test body. So using this strategy, our two tests become this. You can see the input list for our test is defined once as no win parameters. This list is then passed into the test function, at which point it's passed into the gut provided use parameters function. So now when this test is run, this test body will run twice, once for each item in the no win parameters list. If we go to the get test tab and click on run all tests, we should now see all these tests pass in the test runner UI. So now we have our test for no win states. It's time to move on to testing the win states. There are 16 win states if we count eight for X and eight for O. So without much trouble, you can add a test for all of those states using a parameterized test. When rerunning the test suite, in my case, I can see an error. Looking at the errors, you can see that these tests for diagonals, starting in the lower left, are failing for both O and X. Looking at the code, you can spot the error. It's your common copy-paste error. 
the second diagonal check has the same logic as the first check. The second check for a diagonal of a 3x3 three three board needs to give us the lower corner of 0, 2, the middle square of 1, 1, and the upper corner of 2, 0. You can accomplish this with the change seen here in the following code. Now rerun the tests and they should all pass. You now have 29 tests. Notice how fast they are, not even registering a tenth of a second at this point. This is great. The core logic of your game, wind detection, has a great set of unit tests giving us confidence in its correctness. The alternative without these tests would be to manually test the game wind scenario initially and then have to retest any time we made a change to the wind detection logic. There'd be so many scenarios we would most likely forget a few when we did those tests or not have the time to do them all. We are just utilizing a small subset of what gut is capable of, just a simple assert equals function in our case. If you're looking for more advanced features, look to gut's great online documentation for topics such as mocking, test doubles, and spies, which you might expect if you have experience with unit testing. There are also many gradations to unit testing philosophy. They range from mandates for 100% test coverage, all the way to those seeing no value in unit tests and thus not having them. In this series of lessons, we aren't meant to take sides on this testing philosophy, but rather just show you some of the capabilities of gut, and then you can be the judge of the extent you will or will not use unit tests in your games. So now your prototype has unit tests over the wind detection class, giving us more confidence in the correctness of that code. There's still no true concept of turn management in the code. Two players could cooperate and alternate turns and go through a game session, but there's nothing to stop one player from just starting out and consecutively placing three X's in a row for a win. Thus in the next lesson, we will be adding turn management. We'll do this using a concept called test-driven development or TDD. So in that case, we'll actually be writing the test as we build the code out for the functionality. Again, thanks for watching and please hit the like button and subscribe so you won't miss future content.